Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk about something we've talked about many times before, but we're going to go into it a little bit differently. What we're going to talk about is a 555 timer set up as an A-stable multi-vibrator. So, you know, basically it's just a blinker, you, you could call it. So I'm drawing the 555 here. And then we have all of our pins. Okay. Then we have our VCC. And we have ground. All very simple. So pin one is ground. Pin four is reset. We need to hold it high. Pin eight is our VCC. Goes high. And then we have R1, which goes from VCC to pin 7. And we have R2, which goes to pin 6. And pin, since pin 6 is connected to pin 2, they go like that. So we have R1, R2, and then we have a capacitor connected with in line with R1 and R2, this is called C1, and that goes to ground. This is going to give us a simple square wave output with a duty cycle of about 66%, assuming these values, 10K, 10K, and one microfarad. And how we get that timing is through this formula. The formula is equal to one over the time for that timing. And that timing is equal to 1.44 over R1 plus 2R2 times C. So if you plug in 1.44 over 10K plus 2 times 10K times 1 UF, we're going to end up with a frequency of about 48 kilohertz. I say about because you have manufacturing tolerances with our standard uh, components. So it's not gonna be exact, but it's gonna be awfully close. So here is the simple circuit I've put together. We have VCC going into pin eight. Pin four, which is our reset, also goes to VCC. I've just jumped it over there. We have one 10K resistor going to pin seven, which goes to pin six, which is jumped over to pin two. And then we have from pin two, a one microfarad capacitor going to ground, which is also pin one. There's pin three, which is our output. Pay no attention to that potentiometer for now. We'll get to it in a minute. So if I hook up the oscilloscope to our output and turn on the power, I'm gonna rotate you up here so you can see the oscilloscope. And zoom you in. You can see we're getting 45.8, so let's call it 46 hertz. Did I say kilohertz down here? I did. My mistake, it is not 46 kilohertz, it is 48 hertz for our calculation. Okay, so you can also figure out. Our duty cycle by looking at that is about two thirds. If I go to uh, measure channel one, yeah, let's see here. Pardon my arm. Duty cycle. You can now see our duty cycle there, sixty-seven percent, which everything is you know right in line with what we thought. 
All right, let's go back down to our circuit. Oops. So what I've done here is I simply put a potentiometer attached to VCC and ground. It's 50K potentiometer, uh, it's logarithmic, but it really doesn't matter. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to attach the wiper from the potentiometer to pin five, which is our control voltage pin. Now we're set at about 50% here. So if we roll back up and take a look at the oscilloscope, nothing has changed. Everything is pretty much the same, but I'm gonna turn that potentiometer now. And nothing happened. Wonder why, hold on. Ah, it was because I had it in the wrong hole. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn the potentiometer now. You're gonna notice a slight change. Remember, this is a logarithmic pot, so there's gonna be a bigger jump at the end, boom. Now we've changed our duty cycle to 90% and our frequency to 17 hertz. I'll bring it back down. And the same thing happens if we go the other way. We can change our duty cycle to about 35% and we are at 80 hertz. So let me zoom out here and bring this all up into the screen so you can see everything that's going on. See as I change that, how the frequency changes. So pin five in the 555 timer is what is known as the control voltage pin. Let's take a little better look at that. Okay, what we're looking here at here is the 555 timer data sheet. And if we zoom in here, we can take a look at the pins. So here's our internal. We have our VCC coming in through our three resistors. And here's pin five. Pin five, the control voltage pin, is coming on to this pin here, which is part of this comparator that goes to this set reset latch. So we, we, what we end up doing is controlling the voltage at which it flips over. And by doing that, we can change the frequency and the duty cycle of the 555 timer. All right, the reason I just wanted to bring this up is because when we look at the, uh, the data sheet for the 555 timer for an A-stable 555 or any circuit diagram, it always tells us to use a 0.1 microfarad capacitor for ground on that 555 or on, on pin 5. Um, I generally don't. I generally leave it open. I have never had a problem with it. But what I wanted to show you is that you can now take that and put in a potentiometer there and change both your duty cycle and your frequency. Now I'm going to use this in the future playing with my uh, Atari Punk console uh, synthesizer just another way to change sort of the modulation of the output signal. So that's all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this, learned a little something new about the 555 that maybe you didn't know. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons and a big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.